Good morning again, everyone. <laughs> if some of you joined me for my coffee and chat this morning, you know this is my second time I've been on. And I'm ready to paint, ready to paint my relaxing time. I just love it. I hope it's a relaxing time for you, you guys. I still have my iced tea. Because we're warming up big time here. So again, happy 4th of July to all my American friends and followers. I believe Canada just celebrated Canada Day on July 1st, so happy Canada Day to you. Um, so hi Lucy, thank you so much for being here, and Anita, appreciate you guys being here. Um, I really am not expecting a lot of people to come in today, because 4th of July, everybody's probably sleeping in, I don't know. But for me, my relaxing time is getting in my studio and doing some painting. This afternoon I'll probably spend it with my husband doing some things. But um, right now, I'm just enjoying being here. So hopefully you guys all caught my coffee and chat this morning because there was very important information in there for anyone who orders from my website. So go and check that coffee and chat out that I did this morning. And I hope you got your surface ready. It just needs to be white. And you've got your supplies and... Um, grabbed your line drawing over at lanalam.com it's going to be a pretty easy one very very beginner friendly um you know i i uh, like to encourage people to start out just pick up some paint and start painting um i i didn't used to be <laughs> A painter you know I just wanted to paint some things for my son's room so he could have some decorations on the wall um, you know we just couldn't afford things you know and I wanted some cute things I think I painted some Mickey Mouse I got some cardboard and cut out big Mickey Mouse characters and uh, we stuck those on the wall in his room when he was little um, and that's kind of where my painting journey began after that I was kind of hooked I enjoyed uh, painting the occasional thing and doing my thing and all that stuff but um, yeah so I started out not knowing how to really do anything I've taught myself along the way learned a lot and am very happy to pass that on to you but this painting today is very very beginner friendly so if you've never painted before just grab some paints and a paintbrush. Let's go, you guys. Let's go. You got to take that first big step. First big step to painting. All right. So, um, hi, Judy. Yes, happy 4th of July to you as well. Let's put me little in the corner. Let me find my camera. And we're going to get started. Oops. <laughs> or I can just move me all around the screen there. My mouse is caught on something, so it's not letting me control my... It's not letting me control myself. <laughs> so there you go. You can see me. You can see the painting below me, my original one, and then this is my palette cam over here. Um, as you can see, the colors on this one are a little bit different than the colors on the photo that I have there. I'm not really sure where the translation got different. I mean, both of them look gorgeous, but I would say the one that I'm looking at is in between the two colors. It's um, not as bright blue as the photo, not as green as this one. So I have a new camera ordered for above me to shoot down. Uh, I have had this camera since I started doing videos over 10 years ago. So I, I'm due for a new one. <laughs> I'm definitely due for a new one. One that I hope will show my colors more true. I'm not really sure where the translation in the photograph kind of got a little bit different, but I, I like both of them. The colors are just gorgeous in both of them. So your colors can be whatever they want. As long as they remind you of a day at the beach, beachy colors, it's all going to be great. It's all going to be great. Okay. So we're going to need some masking tape and a, a ruler. A pencil all your paints that were listed and then I used these brushes a one inch flat a detail liner mine's a 10-0 a two round this is my uh, 
soft domed brush here. It's what I'll be painting the clouds in with. I've moved my camera way up higher, so I think I'm gonna have to zoom it in. Um, a 10 flat, a half inch angle, and a 12. These are actually chisel blender brushes here. Um, I like the shorter bristles on these, so those are the ones I like to use. You can use a 16 flat for some areas. And if you don't have a one inch flat, you could use a one inch filbert or a three quarter inch filbert. Um, use whatever you have, what, whatever's handy for you. Uh, those are the brushes that, that I want you to use, okay? All right. So I'm gonna move this one off of here. Put it in front of me so I can kind of see how I painted it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna mark down here with our ruler. Um, you can mark about two, between two and a half and two and three quarters. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm, I'm going to kind of eyeball it in between here. There's no exact here. You know, you just put your horizon line where you like it. Okay, and I like to use the T-squares because I can get right up against the edge of my surface. Although on this one, I wanted to show you this. See how this canvas is bent out like that? Well, this canvas is not complete. The, the the material is not completely against the canvas, so um, you have to be careful when you use canvas panels. Make sure there's no issue with the edge. This edge is nice and solid and crisp against the panel, but this one is not. So, you know, I started measuring out on this edge when I painted it. My line was crooked. And I'm like, why is my line crooked? <laughs> it took me a little bit to realize that this corner was really messed up. So if you paint on canvas panels, just always watch that and be aware of it. All right, I'm going to draw a line right across here. Now, this is a very, very easy painting. Um, I did want to bring another painting in to show you different colors that you can use in your painting. Um, this one, I use more pastel -y colors in the sky. It, different, different palette color than this one. You can see the differences. It's, the oranges are definitely different here. And... Uh, my water is darker on this one. And this is more this is more Caribbean <laughs> watercolor to me. So, you know, like I said, if you've got some blues, some oranges, yellow, whatever, you can paint you can paint this scene any any colors. So I just wanted to bring that one in and show you that whatever colors you use are going to be just fine. They don't have to be the exact colors that I use. Okay. All right. Let's grab our tape here. Hi, Linda. Glad you're here joining me today. All right. Ooh. This is some of the stickiest masking tape I have ever used in my life. I'm telling you. I don't know how old it is, but I mean, it, it does a good job, but it's very, very sticky. All right, I'm gonna go right on that, right, you know, I say right on the line, but you know, just just where you can still maybe see the pencil line. Okay, let me hold that up there. See, I can just barely see that pencil line on there. It's okay if you can't see it, if you wanna go, um, I try to go just right on it or slightly below it. Uh, I try not to, um, go above it when I'm painting my sky. Uh, that's how I can keep things a little more straight. That's what the line's for. All right. Um, you'll, you will need your line drawing and some uh, graphite paper for later when we add the chair in. <clears throat> but for now, we're going to start on the back, or on the sky, <laughs> on the upper part. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Don. Oh, man, I should have got a different white. This one's almost empty. I have to see if I have another bottle of white. And grab it. Yeah, it feels like it's got a little more in it, so have that handy. Make sure I got enough paint. Although this is a pretty small canvas, it's only eight by ten. So I'm gonna dampen my large brush here. Really get those bristles awake and filled up with water. You always have to start out with damp bristles. You don't want it dripping with water, but it does need to be wet. Um, 
painting with a dry brush is very difficult unless you're dry brushing. <laughs> so, all right, I spritz my palette with some water. And this is probably going to focus in and out for a little bit till I might put something smaller than that on there. Put a paintbrush on there. Maybe it won't focus in and out so much. So I'm going to load up my brush here. And we're going to work on the sky. I'm going to paint the entire sky in with my white. And I was going to have all my paints out on my palette ready to go, but I got busy doing something else and completely forgot I wanted to do that. So I'm just going to paint it white. Up here. Okay. Grab a paper towel. <clears throat> I'm just going to remove the paint out of my brush. I'm not going to I'm not going to wash it. Uh, I don't need to wash it for what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to take some shore I'm going to put some shoreline out and some uh, open water. I'll just put all the colors out I'm going to use on my sky. Shoreline, open water. Uh, I'm using canyon orange and bright yellow here. So let me get these out. Oop, that's a lot of yellow. I don't, don't even need near that much yellow. Oh man, that's really focusing in and out. I've never had that camera do that much focusing in and out before. Not sure what's going on there. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to work on the top part of the sky right now. So let me zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to take my um, shoreline. I like to do this when it's wet. My white's probably already getting pretty dry. So I'm just going to mix the two together. I want it I want them to blend together anyway I wanted to do a wet into wet so we're just going to add this into the top up here kind of just smooth it out and down now I'm going to be doing the uh, sky a couple of times because I want it to be a little more opaque, uh, brighter colors than what I've got here. So I'm going to wash that brush because I want to go and load up a different color here. I'm going to put a little white back down in here because I really want that to be damp. And we're going to put some orange in here, orange and yellow. Okay, so we're going to take our orange and put it, I'm still using this big brush here, but you can certainly go to a smaller brush. I've just loaded the orange just on one edge. I'm picking up white because that white is wet on here. I'm staying um, fairly close to the tape. And like I said, I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to wipe off and grab some yellow. And put that in here. Now I don't want my yellow to get into my blue. You know why, don't you? Because <laughs> we don't want to have any um, green in our sky. So I'll put those two in there. And if you like this subtle, subtle color here, I'm going to go grab some white. And rinse that yellow out of my brush because I don't want that to get into my blue. And then I'm going to go right along my yellow there and blend that out. So if you like the more softer sky here, you can certainly keep it these softer colors. Um, I want mine to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to dry it real quick. Get my... And then I'm going to do the same colors on here. I'll start with the white and just put it in the middle. And then go to my blue. I'm going to add a little bit darker blue into that area up there. And, uh, good morning, Linda. I'm watching two feeds here, the YouTube and the Facebook one. So, All right, so we've got that nice and dry. I'm turning it this way because it's just a little bit easier to paint 
pulling towards me then. So I'm going to put the white right here. Okay, I'm going to pick up that light blue and it goes up here, blends down into that white. Kind of smooths out and I want to add some darker blue in here. So I'm just going to corner into that darker blue that I've got there and I'm just going to put some in here, both sides, and just gently blend that out. I just want a little, little touch of something going on there. Maybe it's really far distant clouds. I don't know. It can be whatever. A little bit of moisture. If your brush starts dragging and not blending out your paint, just grab a little drop of moisture on your brush. And that's why I always keep water on my palette. All right, we're going to go back into all of these colors here. So again, I'm going to put some white right through here. A little bit of moisture in my brush. And this is just because I want all my colors to be darker. I, I don't want them to, um, I want this to be a bright sunset. So I'm putting my yellow in, blending it up slightly into that white. I'm just going to wipe my brush off and grab my orange and put that in down here. So you can already see how much bolder and darker that is. So pretty. Okay. So that's just the basics of the sky. Um, and you can play around with it and do as much as you want with it. I do want to put a little bit more white down here. Maybe on these edges out here, a little bit more. Oh, like be on camera shot, wouldn't you? That's what happens when I zoom in. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, I need to dry it before we start adding clouds in here. Um, and we're going to use that little domed brush. So let's get it dry. See if I have any questions. No questions. Such an easy painting here. It should not take us a long time to do. But, oh my gosh, so fun. This would be so pretty on a pillow cover or... You know, a tray. Oh, a tray, yeah. That would be so pretty on a tray. Okay, let's grab our domed brush here. And I think I'm pretty dry. I think first I will put a placement for my sun. Um, you can just go with white or you can go with a mix of white and yellow. Let's put our sun right here. This is going to help me when I put my clouds in so I don't get too uh, close to the sun. I want that sun to be front and center. So I'm going to take this brush. I'm going to use it dry. I'm going to load that dark blue on my brush. And we're just going to randomly place some clouds in here. I'm just going to start doing a little circle motion and letting the clouds be whatever size they want to be and whatever shape they want to be. Pick up some more paint and they're your clouds. You just be creative. Now if you don't have a brush like this you could use like a worn out filbert brush would be really good. They're more linear as they get closer to the horizon, so don't make them too fluffy down here. Where's my, my tape goes right, just about right about where I put, put that cloud right there. Maybe we'll have a more linear one out here. Um, like I said, they're your clouds. You, you, you choose how you want them to be. Just a very gentle circular motion here. And clouds come in all shapes, forms, sizes. <laughs> um, I used to love to sit outside as a kid and look at the clouds. 
watch them move through the sky. I just lay in the grass, looking up at the sky. So, super easy to create some fun little clouds here. Put, I have to put one down. Where's my tape? It's right there. But let's have a, a linear one here, a longer, skinnier one. Right through there. Maybe a little one there. Uh, like I said, it's your, it's your sky. Just have fun with it. Doesn't have to look just like mine. Just create some fun stuff here. Okay, I think I think that's good enough for my sky. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I'm just going to wipe the paint out of my brush because I'm going to continue to use this and it, I want the, the white to mix a little bit with that blue. So I'm going to mix it once and then remove it on a paper towel and then grab some more white and let it mix. So we get this really light blue color here. I mean you could go to your shoreline but I think using that darker color as my um, color to mix with kind of makes the cloud work together a little bit better. So I'm going to come in here and just tap some highlights on my clouds. We'll, we'll brighten these and just kind of wherever. I'm leaving the bottom a little bit darker. Um, if you cover up too much of the bottom you can come back and, and put some of that color back in. this one. A little tap, tap, tap on that one. And this is so easy to do. So. on that one, one more here, and then we're going to brighten up with some just white. So we've got some highlights going on here. All right, remove some of that paint, wipe off. Still going to use this brush and load some white. Now you could go to a much smaller brush and get some of that blue out. Okay, and this time I'm just going to do a straight up and down tapping. Can you please tell which tap you should use for oil? I'm not really sure what you're asking there. So uh, I'm just using this brush and just tapping with it. So I'm not really sure what the question is there. Um, maybe word it a different way. I'm not quite understanding that question. So, all right, let's put some highlight clouds on here. Some, or some highlights on our clouds, I guess I should say. I'm gonna keep this mostly at the top. Just my white. I do want to see, continue to see that other color that I put in there, so I'm trying not to cover it all up. And like I said, if you go and cover up too much, just go back and you could probably just do a little float of color on there and that color back in. So just shape your clouds however however it appeals to you. So I know some people kind of stress out about clouds, but <laughs> clouds should never be stressful because they come in so many shapes, sizes, forms. They have so many reflections of 
the you know the water the sky whatever on top of them so um, you know if you really want to practice clouds and be you know like a photo perfect with your clouds then grab some brushes and some paints and just play around and practice them I'm just adding a little bit more white I want a few brighter little highlights on some of these maybe they're getting a little bit more of the the light coming from the Sun this one might be getting more light like on that edge okay I think we're pretty good so I'm gonna say I'm done with this brush and I'm gonna wash it out I do have another one if I need to come back and add more in there, but um, I think I'm done with it. Okay, now if you have any clouds where one is like in front of another one, like this one, um, I have it, this one is in front, I wanted to separate, I, I painted it all in as one, but I wanted to separate and make it look like there was two clouds. Um, I didn't really paint any in that way, but you can just take some of your um, color, your darker color, and if, if your clouds are too dark, you don't want them to be that dark, add a little white in with your, um, with your uh, first color that you put in. I may have added white in with my uh, original one but I can't remember so I just kind of separated those right there just a little separation if you want any clouds to look like that's two clouds not one big long cloud okay all right I think we're done with the sky we can remove our tape and we want to make sure it's dry and now I'm going to tape this off again mine's pretty dry and we're going to start painting in the water down here so I think the sky turned out pretty good like I said if you want it lighter you just have to add more white more white is that's it just add more white so now I'm going to go just slightly above this line try and get it on here straight I don't need to mark off again. Now, if your paint caused a big ridge right here, then you might want to take something and lightly sand it, a brown paper bag or something like that. Okay, I'll fold this under because I don't want it to get, to keep sticking to my paper. I'm just gonna make myself a little tab. Okay. All right, we're gonna paint our sand in down here first. So, my two browns that I had on my list. And we can use a little bit of shoreline as well. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my big brush and I'm going to mix a little bit of these two. They don't have to be perfectly mixed. That would be best if they're not perfectly miss, mixed. And we're gonna paint in down here. I'll probably do this a couple times. Let me get some of this moisture out of my brush. I feel like it has tons of moisture. Grab some of this color and a little bit of the darker brown. And like I said, they do not have to be perfectly mixed. And we're just going to paint our sand down here, a little bit more of that lighter color. We're not going to see a whole lot over here, but I want you to know how to paint it if you decide you don't want to put the grasses in over here. Okay. Bring it up through here a little bit more. Now I'm going to start adding a little bit of that shoreline in here. And let it mix with that brown a little bit. I'm gonna have to put my easel up here so I can keep you on camera. 
a little bit of brown down here, a little bit of shoreline. That's the color that we put up in the sky. So we want it down here in our sand. And mix a little bit of that. We want this to be very varied in color here. We're gonna put some little dibby dabs to look like sand in a little bit, but for now we want it to look, I'll have to add a little white in here. All right, that's looking pretty good. So just put your beachy stuff down in there. Um, I'll wash this brush because we're going to use it for the water. I think I'm going to get my easel out so I can keep it better on shot for you guys. Let's see if I can keep it a little bit better on my camera shot here. Okay, <laughs> let's put our other uh, colors that we haven't put out yet. Um, it's my darker, I already have that one out. I really didn't need to add more of that one. I just had two other blues that I used here. Um, they're kind of green, tinted a little more on the green side because that's what I wanted my water to look like. But, you know, if you have other colors that you like better, then you can go for those colors. We're going to start at the back, back here. And I'm going to start with that darker color back here, right along that tape edge. Again, I've got to get some of this moisture out of my brush. These big brushes just hold that moisture in like crazy, and I don't want all that moisture in my painting. So we're just starting at the back, back here with that darker blue. Whatever blue you're using, just grab it. I'm going to start picking up that mid value that I put out there and blending it in. Now this uh, surface I'm painting on is just a hardboard, so it is definitely going to paint completely different than a canvas. A canvas is going to grab my brush and um, do different things with it. <laughs> so, oops, I really didn't want that dark in there. I just want that, that lighter color. And we're going to start blending that in here. I probably will have to do my water a couple of times because being on a hard board, it's not looking like I want it to look. So I'm going to grab some white and mix that on my brush with some of this lighter color. Get you out a little bit farther so you can see the whole canvas. That's probably helpful. And then I'm going, you can go to a smaller brush if you need to. I'm going to start bringing it onto the sand. This is, might be where I want to move to my um, angle brush because I want to create softer layers on the sand. So rinse that big enormous brush out and I'm going to go to my half inch angle brush here and load those two colors in my brush and we're going to start adding some I'm just wiggling the brush um, kind of back and forth, trying not to cover up all of my sand. Now over here I'm going to have the grasses, so I'm, I'm not going to see a lot of this. But um, I want the water coming down further here than it is here, so I'm going to... Just bring it down. I'm just just doing a little wiggling of the brush. 
shape your water how you want it to be shaped. See, we're coming along the sand here, and we're going to create some, maybe a second row of waves here. I want some coming up on the beach. These are going to be more transparent, so I don't have a whole lot of that blue in my brush. some in there, but we don't have to have a lot. And you just decide how you want your, your uh, uh, water to show up. I went over that white there, but I'll come back and put it back because I needed, just needed to um, add a little bit longer one. Now we can come out here in the water and do some out here in the water. You know, how they, how everything kind of rolls in. I want my water to be more calm. I don't want it to have big waves and splashes, but um, if you want yours to uh, be more wavy and splashy, you can do that. I don't have a whole lot of water on my brush here, or I mean a whole lot of paint. <laughs> I am keeping it moist with water, um, but I don't have a lot of paint. This is just a beginner, beginner type um, beachy. Come back and put that one back in. And we're going to have our chair here, and we're not going to see a lot of this here. But you know how the water gets a little more transparent as it gets onto the sand. Go into my white. Uh oh says my signal is not doing good. There, we're back. Sorry about that. I'm not really sure what that was. They've been working on the lines all around us for months. So, okay, we've got some nice watery stuff coming in there. So I want to create a little bit more highlight on those. Um, I'm going to go out to my water, though. It needs a second coat of colors on here because I am on wood, and so it doesn't paint the same. That color, then my green color, and blend them out. I just want a little bit solid, more solid out here. Wipe my brush, go into my light color, which I'm always picking up that darker color, but that's okay, that could be some shadows in the water. And then a little bit of white on my brush, and we'll blend these out here. I don't like to see those lines on my on my canvas or my hardboard. So I like everything to be nice and smooth. I don't need that big, big, big back there. It will be lightning back there, but Okay, that's looking pretty good. Liking that much better. All right, I just want to put a little bit of um, highlight on some of my water waves it's crashing in. So I'm going to have just white. Now, you can do this with a round brush. If you want to just come in with a round brush and just add some little highlights on your water. But some of these I want to be a little brighter. I think I will switch over to my round brush because do so many things with this water you can um, you can create you know how water has the lines that are in it you know those waves have all that stuff in it and we're not going to see a lot of this over here so just concentrate on the parts that you can see and brighten any of those and I'm not really sure why my it's frustrating. It's got to be frustrating for you because it's frustrating for me to watch it here uh, and see it like freeze up. So, all right, just where, wherever you want to brighten, brighten that on there. 
okay? Okay, while I have this round brush, we're gonna put some little dots in the sand um, for like, um, you know, make it look more like sand. So I'm going to um, just put a few in here and then tap them back with my finger. You could spatter this on as well. Um, but I, I, you know, didn't do a whole lot, so I don't need to really get too carried away. I'm not going to go over here because we're going to have that um, little land there. And we can do this. And we're going to do a little bit of color underneath our... Some of our waves here so I'll just stay with this um, round brush and I'm mixing both the oyster beige and the um, I'm gonna shape that wave a little bit better and we're just gonna put some darker color on I'm not sure I'll even see that wave but some of these you want to put just a little bit of shadow coming underneath it and I'm just using a round brush not much paint at all on my brush, you guys. Um, I just mixed a little bit on there, and so I'm just kind of tapping it in and smoothing it out. Mostly in the areas where we can still see the sand. There won't be a whole lot um, that we'll see once we put our chair and our land in here. But if you want to do this without um, the chair and the land, you're just creating a little bit of shadow underneath your sand or your waves there where the sand is kind of more wet I guess I should point that out it's a little bit more wet sand here okay so I think that is that I'm gonna wide angle out because I'm gonna remove my tape I think my water looks good you can go out here as much as you want, uh, I'll just do a quick one out here with some really light white and, you know, maybe you can see some, I don't know, some other waves kind of coming in, but they're, they're kind of very, very soft and, you know, not super noticeable, okay, because I've got a pretty calm water scene here where I don't have a lot of waves splashing around. Okay, let's take our tape off here. And we can see our horizon line. Now is, if everything's dry, when you want to put in your um, chair line drawing. You don't necessarily need the line drawing for the landmass um, unless you feel like you absolutely need it. Um, I'm just going to put my line down through there, and then I'm just going to draw some lines coming out where I spit my words out in a minute. My, my pine tree to come out to. Yes, Linda, this is a perfect summer painting. You're right. Um, I think it's a very relaxing one. All right, so I'm just going to tape this down. Keep my ceiling fan from blowing it all over the place. And grab my graphite paper. I'm using gray. I don't, you could probably use white if you've got a fairly new white graphite. But since I'm painting everything in black, I, I, gray is fine. It's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to put my lines on here. my signal again. I'm going to have to check and make sure my cable behind me is okay, but seriously, they have been working on the lines here forever. All right, landmass there, and I'm just going to put a line here, a line here, a line here. This is just for placement. I mean, you don't need it, but if you feel like you need it, let's see, I missed a line here. I 
want to make sure I've got all my lines. Like I said, they're going to overlap. Um, so when we highlight the lines is when you'll be able to tell, you know, what's what. So my my um, landmass here, I think I'm actually going to make it bigger down here. So um, we're going to put some black paint out. Because everything's going to get painted in black. All right. Um, I think for my landmass, I'll use this bigger brush here, but then I'm going to go to a smaller one. So I think I want mine to be a little bit bigger. So we're just going to paint it in with black. This is a silhouette. Um, so we're just painting all the stuff in the forefront with black. And probably a couple of coats. So now I'm going to go to a smaller brush here. Um, this one here, I'll probably use flat and a round brush because um, those posts and stuff I want to be. Now I probably should have sanded my horizon line there. I feel a little bit of a bump there. Um, I had heavy paint. off the edge of the canvas. Silhouettes are pretty easy. Um, you don't always have to paint them in with black. You could use just a dark, you could mix um, one of your colors, like that dark blue that we have. You could mix a little bit of black with it and make a blue black. It doesn't have to always be black, but it's the easiest one to show you how to work with, where you don't have to mix and then Wish you had it darker, because black's going to be pretty dark, so. I need some more moisture on the palette. See, I, I put out way, way more paint than I, I needed. <laughs> Don't need that much paint. As much paint as I put out. I put enough out probably for, you know, that yellow, there's enough there for probably six projects. So just put a little bit out at a time. You can always grab more and put it on your palette. Just take your time. Paint it in. If you paint in each part on its own, it really helps you to see where uh, each separation is so that you can paint your highlights on. So you'll know where your, your um, support sticks and all that stuff are on the chair. Okay, I'm going to move to my round brush and finish that out. Sure, I need those supports as big as I painted them in. So I really want to make sure my umbrella post is straight. Let's see if I can erase that graphite line, but I may not be able to. Depends on how dry my paint was when I put that line on there. Boy, that that post. This wooden piece that connects here. And, oh, frozen up on my feet again. I'm sure this is probably the most frustrating, guys. A right, little bit at an angle. And probably don't need to be this, this fat, I'm telling you. So we got one here. 
all the way down. Comes across. Oh, I really did transfer these lines in awful darn big. Okay. Um, this one comes from the edge of the chair here. And comes down. And then we've got one right here. Okay. I have to straighten it. This is the biggest umbrella post <laughs> ever. Supporting that tiny little umbrella. Okay. All right, I'm going to let that dry and come back and see if I can erase some of my graphite lines on there remove some of those. I'll wash over it with a second layer of black paint. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint a second layer on this one. Just a thin layer of paint. It doesn't have to be a lot of paint on your brush. Mix it with water. Get just a nice um, thin layer, all we're doing is filling in where maybe all of the background didn't get completely covered. You do not have to have heavy thick paint. I never do when I'm painting my second coats on. Try not to have them too thick when I'm painting my first ones on. This one's dry, so I'm going to put a little wash of this color up here and make sure all of my background color got covered up. don't have to worry about being too, you know, going all the way up to the edges because we already got the shape of it. We're just kind of making sure everything's covered up. I'm not going to do my um, legs again, but I do want this chair cover to be a little bit more opaque. All right, we're going to let all of that dry. Let's I want to brighten up my sun because when I do my rays here pretty soon, I want to make sure that my sun is pretty bright. You could add some yellow to it, you know, if you want some yellow on the bottom because it is, you know, kind of reflecting that a little bit. You could add some yellow on the bottom. It's your sun. Be creative with it. Your sun. All right, so the um, palm tree over here. Uh, thank you. Let's see. Janine, I hope I said that right. Thank you. I'm glad you're happy to be here watching this. I hope you're going to paint it. Um, with this, I'm going to use my angle brush, and I'm just going to load up some black on my brush. I want um, a little bit of moisture in that black. I can go right into my dirty water when I'm doing black. I'm going to chisel edge my line. Okay, that's just telling me where I'm going with my my um, my um, pine tree. I'll spit it out. I promise I'll spit it out. <laughs> uh, okay, you can go to a smaller brush here, but I'm just going to chisel edge and pull some stuff down and go to this side. And I'm just pulling from that center line and creating some look of pine. No, not pine. <laughs> They're not pine trees. <laughs> oh my gosh. No pine trees on the beach. Let it be loose and draggy. And these are palm trees, not pine trees. And you're just flicking and working your way down to that tip of that branch. Okay. These really are super easy to paint. Okay, up here I'm going to go up. I'm just kind of flicking and dragging. I don't have much moisture in my brush, so I'm using pretty much straight paint here. I'm going to bring this one out a little bit more here. Make it a little bit fluffier. They don't have to be this fluffy. You can see a lot of the sky in between. When you're painting on a canvas, you're definitely going to get that more uh, open stuff because the, the
the canvas is going to pull on the brush and it's only going to take paint where it wants to take paint and so um, you'll definitely get more open stuff in the in between your um, limbs here. I almost called it a pine tree again. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm up on the chisel edge of this brush, just pulling it down. You can use any brush to paint this in. It doesn't have to be an angle brush, just whatever brush you want to use. Um, so there's our palm tree leaves. Super easy, don't you think? Super easy. All right, let's add some grasses over here. So I'm going to thin down my black, make it inky consistency. And we're just going to pull some grasses going all different directions. Uh, I'm using this round brush, but you could certainly go to a detail brush. It doesn't matter where they come from because we're not going to be able to tell that. Um, we just want to get a lot in here and they need to go all different directions. Okay, so move your brush whichever way you move it is which way it's going to curve that grass blade and you're up on the very tip of the brush very very tippy toe of this brush okay make sure they vary in their height that's really important Tippy toe of the brush. The brush, I'm holding the brush straight up and down, you guys. Straight up and down. I need a little more moisture here. Ooh, that's a that's a big one. So let's put Okay, so that looks pretty good for my grasses, I think. All right, let's put a little topper on these grasses and I'm just gonna tap on them. You don't have to do them all, just pick some. And You do want varying heights though, so we don't want all of them to stay the same height. Whichever side of the blade of grass that you want it to be on. And let's say you wanted one here, but there's no there's no um, stem. We'll just draw yourself, paint yourself a stem. Draw it, paint it, whatever. All the way down. Okay, that looks good. I tried not to do them all, but you know, again, if you feel like you did too many of them, just come back in and stroke in some that don't have any tops on them. You know, just some, I don't know, maybe all their stuff blew off. Who knows? It's your painting. And that's going to also help make it look a little more dense in there. Okay. Let's see if I can erase these graphite lines over here that I didn't use. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Alright, I want to quickly shade down here at the bottom with some burnt umber. I'll maybe add a tiny little bit of black to that just to darken it up. Let's give some weight down here, some darkness, some shadow. I guess I want it to be a little more shadowy back here at this edge. Okay, we're going to put a shadow underneath our chair. So just take whatever brush, round brush, flat brush, doesn't matter does not matter. Take some of your black and make sure it's really thin down. We don't want um, it, this to be real dark because we can, we can darken it if we need to. I don't know. This might not be dark enough. Nope. Not dark enough. And let me look how I did 
did my shadow. I did shadow back here. And I'm just patting some black in there. Some really thin black. I did shadow underneath. You want to do this before you put your highlights on. So, so maybe a little bit more shadow here. And then it comes out back here. Um, if you want your umbrella to have a little bit of shadow on the sand, you can put that over here. Um, so that's some nice shadow going on there. So that chair is ready for its highlights. I think everything's ready for its highlights. So we're going to go into some highlights here. I might have to get me a different brush. Oh, there, I got that off. Uh, I'm going to put fresh white out because I do want some fresh white for this. Oh, goodness. I did not want to come out of there. I'm going to drop my paintbrush. That one, I think the other one, I need to clean it. It was clogged up with something. All right. Let's start on our highlights. We want clean water to thin our white because we don't want our white to change color. All right. Out here on my tree, I'm just going to stroke some of these into the tree here and there. I don't want to cover the entire limb. I just want it to be like that's where the sun is hitting that particular limb. And I'm not going to say what kind of tree it is because I keep wanting to say pine tree. <laughs> but it's not a pine tree. It's a palm tree. Alright, just put some on there. Just you can put a little bit down the center if you want to see the center a little bit easier. You could also mix this with a little bit of black to um, make it a little bit of a gray color. Um, let's put, I'm going to put <laughs> maybe a couple in here and then on this one. Maybe just that side's getting some some sun. So this will kind of help determine which one comes more forward as well. So Okay, that looks pretty good there. Pretty darn good. Uh, let's add a little highlight onto just a few of these. Maybe the sun's kissing some of these. Um, I didn't really do too much on the... Um, stems but you can do some and you don't have to do them all whichever ones you feel like are really catching uh, a highlight from that Sun here in a minute okay just it's just a little little here a little there don't put it everywhere <laughs> look I made a rhyme little here little there don't put it everywhere all right, so on our umbrella, I'm going to very lightly, this is where you might want to go to the detail liner. I think I did use the detail liner on this part. I'm going to see if I can do it with this bigger brush. And we're going to come down here and just very lightly create. This is actually the back side of the umbrella right there. So like this one would come right here. If we were or somewhere around in there, if we were um, sitting at the umbrella. <laughs> but I decided I didn't want to show that, so I'll just cover that back up with some black. Okay, so now we need to add our highlights on the front edge. So we're going to come around this edge, and it's going to be pretty bright here on our post there. We can have a little bit hitting it back here. Okay, on our chair, we're going to have some coming down like this. Okay, I'm going to go down this post first because that's going to separate from, help me separate the part that you sit on, on the chair, um, which is right here. There's a a wood support that goes through here so we're gonna put a little highlight there okay now we're starting to see some shape aren't we 
on the front of the chair is going to get a little bit right through here. So we're seeing that. Now I'm going to kiss a little bit of it up here and down this post here. Just kind of dragging it on. We don't want to make it look too perfect. Maybe a little bit's hitting it there. This is where you could do gray back here and get some highlights. Um, then this post right here. Okay, so our chair looks pretty good. I like those highlights on there, man. If you add those highlights, that chair really chair and umbrella really do pop and we got our shading on there um, down here in my grasses now I put this on here but you don't have to do that if you want to keep it just the black but I did take a little bit of gray and tap it on there give it a little bit of texture so I'm gonna mix my white and my black and make a gray color see if this will show up I don't know if it'll show up oh yeah and if you get too much you just come back with your black and I'm just very messily tapping this in here. Okay, you get, you get more than you want, you come back with your black, okay? All right, let's do our white highlight down the center of the, I'm actually gonna move to my other flat brush here, my 12 flat, and I'm gonna load some white into my brush. We're going to create, the, create, not create, <laughs> we're going to create the uh, glow in the water here. I'm using just the chisel edge of the brush, just barely letting that touch the water. And just now I'm coming up on the toe because I want this to get um, more narrow as it comes forward. And it's not going to be a perfect line, so don't try to make it a perfect, perfect line. You're just hitting it here and there all the way down the canvas for our bright white highlight, okay? So that's pretty easy. Maybe a little bit more. A couple of these places could be a little brighter. That white's gonna fade in there, especially because my brush had, um, had uh, quite a bit of water, okay? You can come out farther if you want, but I wanted to keep it narrow. Now, I also added some of the orange. I mixed a little bit of yellow, I think, with it. Maybe white. I can't remember. And um, did some orange out here as reflection. You don't have to do that because if you like just the white, you can keep it just white. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit since I did it in my original one. Uh, my orange. And I did not use white. Maybe I used the oyster beige because I kept it a little bit of a lighter orange put some of this out here. So I mix just a little bit of oyster beige in here with my orange. And we'll just create some orange reflections coming in here. Just just a few. Don't don't get carried away. You can get carried away doing this so quickly. So just do a few. Um, maybe brighten those just a little because I'm not sure how well they're showing in the screenshot here. paint. Let me get that off my brush because I just want a little bit brighter on that orange. Okay. You can do yellow if you want. Um, but I really just like the white in here. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more right through here. wider out here because I, I don't want my um, my line to be all the same width all the way down I, I really want it to vary and how far out it goes and you know just make it look a little more natural okay we're ready for the rays of the sun now now these are pretty easy. You do not have to um, draw these in. Actually, I don't want you to draw them in. If you do draw them in, you really need to use a white uh, pencil. 
like a dressmaker's pencil with white lead in it uh, so that you don't have to worry about covering up lines. The, the white, if you use a dressmaker's pencil, will blend in with the white paint and it will disappear. So um, you're just going to go out from your sun. So I'm going to go out at the top first because that might be easier for you to see. And we're just going to create some rays going out. Now make sure that you're keeping your circle shape as you build your rays here. Don't, um, don't let your circle get uh, uncircle shaped, you know, oh. or do what I just did and do a duplicate line. Just take that off. We're just using light paint here. I'm not, I don't have a lot of paint in my brush. I'm trying to keep it mostly at the tip of the brush. Brush is straight up and down. I'm not giving a lot of pressure, but I'm trying to give a quick movement. The slower you make the movement, the more difficult um, making these rays will be. So just bring them out wherever you want them to go. Of course, on a canvas, it's definitely going to um, pull and drag on, on the uh, bristles. So, and we don't want them all to be the same size. So just work your way around and make these rays. And we definitely want it to come to our uh, umbrella and hit that umbrella. And I think I need one more right here. And those look pretty good. Chisel edge of the brush. I'm going to paint my sun back in because some of those lines were a little bit darker than my sun and I don't want it to look like there's actual lines in my sun. Um, and I think that is going to finish that. So I'm sure that my um, colors <laughs> are not going to match. Because, you know, when you can never paint something the exact same way twice. It's just impossible to do. Unless you have them lined up and you're painting it all at once and loading your brush and, and doing all the things all at the same time. So I'm going to move my stuff out of the way. Turn off some of these cameras so that we can compare these and see how well we did here. So we'll take that off. wide angle out so I can get both of these on here oh look at that so nice they look good look really good I can see my lines on this one to separate my sections there a little bit more than I can on this one but I can go touch those up and make them a little darker and then I did add a little more highlight looks like here on my um, land mass here so Maybe I'll come in and add some more textury highlight. It's just tapping it and dabbing it. So that, that's going to give me three values right there. The black, the gray, and the white. Ooh, a lot of white. And I think I actually did that with a round brush because it looks like I kind of did it with a round brush. Kept it there at the top. Okay. Alright. They both look really good. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Did you like this? Are you going to paint it? I hope you're going to paint it. I hope you saw how easy it was to paint. And um, really on a canvas, it's going to pull that paint off your brush a little bit. I mean, it's going to catch it and make it hit and miss on uh, the texture of the canvas, which I really loved when it did that. Um, one reason why I like to paint this kind of scene on a canvas is because I like how it uh, pulls the paint at the brush. I'm going to switch these because that side is crooked and it's making mine making mine look crooked. So, yeah. I think they turned out great. Original and the one we did today. Super fun painting. If you're doing a larger surface, you can put two chairs on there with the umbrella in between the two. That would be fun. Um, I originally was going to do a larger canvas and put uh, two chairs on there, but 
I grabbed a small one because I thought it would be faster, uh, more fun, and relaxing to paint. So this one was a lot of fun for me, you guys. Do you have any um, questions? Let's see. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Cindy, you're going to keep working on yours. Good, good, good. Um, uh, anytime you have questions, just email me and, and let me know or message me on Facebook. You can message me on Facebook and send me a, a copy of your picture. And if you need help anywhere, I'm always happy to answer questions and help. Um, thanks, Janine. I'm glad you're going to paint it. Um, yeah, it was a fun one. So let me bring in what we're doing on our next live because I'm excited about it. Uh, teaching it. It's back here. <laughs> Grab it back here. Oh, this one right here, you guys. So, those of you that follow me on YouTube, I put a question on my community tab. Gave you three options of uh, a painting that you would like to do so that I could teach you how to paint what you see. Um, and this was the one that got the most votes. So, this is the one we're going to paint. Um, July 14th is my scheduled day, so I'm um, not sure if it's going to be a morning or afternoon um, live at this point. I'm thinking morning. Um, people are just more, more alert in the morning, and since this one has a lot of things that I want to teach you, I want you to be able to take that in and um, understand it. So this one will be July 14th. Um, so be watching for that. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really fun one. I so enjoyed painting this one. And now it's from a photograph. I just looked at the photograph and painted what I saw. Okay, There is a line drawing for this on my website, lanalam.com, and I've titled it Fancy Drink. So you can go grab that there. It's got a, a color photo and everything that you will need to paint this and the prep instructions on how to get ready if you're going to paint with me live. Uh, probably not a lot of people paint with me live. Um, uh, I tend to go a little bit faster. When I'm teaching a class, I do slow it way down. Um, but the lives, I know you can go back and watch it over and over. And a lot of people watch just to see how it's done to begin with. And then they go back and paint it, which is fine. Go back and watch it as many times as you need to. So um, it is going to be a, a lot of fun, this one is. Um, so I'm hoping to do a series on these, maybe one a month of paint what you see in a photo. And so I'll probably be posting some options um, that you can choose from and then we'll paint it. Um, which will be a lot of fun, I think. So if you have not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. 60% um, of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed to me. <laughs> so if you are watching and you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if at any point you enjoyed today's uh, live. Um, I appreciate you guys and um, share my video if you think someone would love to uh, see this and paint it. Um, someone that's starting out painting that beach scene, I think they would really love it. So let me make myself a little bit bigger up here. As soon as I get to me. I'm gonna, well, <laughs> I keep clicking on the wrong one. There we go. There we go. Got me bigger. I'm in the screen now. Okay. All right, any questions from anyone at all? I'm here. I'm here right now, live. You can ask me any question you want to ask me. Right here, right now. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lucy. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. If you didn't catch my live this morning, please go over and watch the coffee and chat from this morning. It's got some important information about my website you don't want to miss if, uh, you know, you have purchased anything from my website. You want to make sure you get it downloaded. Um, message me, email me, any questions whatsoever. So you'll have to catch it on 
the replay and Lucy will do one with big waves. Ooh, I want to see that. So when you post it, please be sure and tag me. I want to see that so much. Big waves. I thought about doing big waves in this one. I thought, no, I'm keeping it easy for those people who are just starting out. I just, I just want them to not stress out about waves because waves can really, you know, mess with your mind. <laughs> they can drag you under and we don't want that to happen. So thank you, Don. All right, everybody, I want you to enjoy the rest of your 4th of July. Grab some paints and paint up something fun. Enjoy your day. Do something relaxing, something you love. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one, everybody. Thanks so much, everybody.